So there's this beautiful material here on Ambient CG that I'd love to use in my Godot game. It's got some displacement on it that makes the rocks really pop out. But if I go into Godot, see so here I've got a product where I have all of the textures loaded in. I've got the albedo set here, roughness, normal map, ambient inclusion. But if I go to try to add displacement, you'll see that the only option here is height that seems to fit. And if I load in the height map here as displacement, we get this really weird warped effect. Like what's going on here? This is not how this is, <laughs> this is not how this material is supposed to look, right? So I'll just make one. So we'll make a new project for this just so you can know for sure that you can follow along. Cool. We'll make a new 3D scene. We'll add a child node, type in mesh, mesh instance 3D. And for the mesh, we'll make this a plane. So we'll do new plane mesh. Now, if I go into wireframe perspective, you can see that there's not a lot of geometry here. So if you want to displace this mesh, it's going to be really hard to do anything interesting with just four vertices. So let's add some of that. If you click on this button here, you'll see some of the mesh options come up and I can add some subdivisions. Uh, we'll add 50 just to have that much more geometry to work with. I'll make the size a bit bigger as well. Okay, so the next thing is obviously you got to download this. I already have it downloaded. And if I go ahead and extract it, first of all, we don't need all this stuff. So this .png, this is just a picture of this sphere. We don't need that at all. All we really need is the roughness, displacement, color, ambient occlusion. And for the normal, we want the OpenGL version of the normal. So we'll go ahead and extract that. We'll find our folder. I'm gonna make a new folder to store all of the stuff. Ground underscore 079L. And we'll save it there. Now in this case, I'm using 8K textures. You probably do not need 8K. I'm just gonna use that because it's gonna look better on YouTube. And when I open up Godot, it's gonna reimport the assets. Cool, now that's all done. We can go ahead and create our material. So if I look at surface material override, see it says empty, we're gonna make a new shader material. And for the shader, we will make a new shader. We'll call this shader displacement. And if I click here, it'll pop up here. You can also double click on the file system here if you want instead. Oh, and I'll put this back into normal perspective. Display normal, it's just so we can see the material. Uh, so where to start? First of all, we're gonna need to add in all these beautiful textures we've loaded into our project. So to do that, we're going to need to have some uniform variables that will display here in the inspector. So we type in uniform, and in this case, it's going to be a sampler 2D, and we'll do the al uh, texture of the albedo, and that's gonna pop right up here in shader parameters. And now because these are 8K, I have to click on load, otherwise it like lags so hard that it crashes for me. So I can't drag in, but you can probably just drag in your textures here if they're not 8K. And now to get this to actually display, we're gonna put this in the fragment. Uh, so vertex is actually like the individual vertices, how they're placed and the fragment is the actual pixels on the screen. So I can type in albedo, all caps equals, we're gonna use the built-in texture function and the texture we're gonna load in is the texture underscore albedo and we're gonna give it the UV. So it knows how to actually map that to the mesh. And we need to make sure that we read this as RGB. And you can see right away, we have the albedo displaying, but it's kind of washed out. So what's going on here? Well, story time. <laughs> so when we first, like the human race, when we the human race first were figuring out how to digitize images, we figured out that we perceive things logarithmically. We perceive images logarithmically. We actually perceive sound logarithmically as well. So we can actually save storage space and thereby actually increase the quality of the image because we're using our precious storage space to, to save the important details instead of stuff that we don't perceive anyway. So we can save storage space by saving things logarithmically. But then if you want to do math on things, we have to like remember, okay, this is actually stored logarithmically. So our math is going to be weird and like wrong unless we remember that, hey, we like encoded this a certain way. So right now Godot is like displaying this without converting it first, right? So this is an sRGB space and then it's not interpreting it right. So we need to tell Godot, well, either we could do it manually. We could say, take each color value of this pixel and raise it to the power of 2.2. That's a really good approximation of converting from sRGB to linear space. Uh, or we could just use this built-in thing with that Godot has, thank goodness, where we just write uh, source color, right? That's a shader parameter hint that just tells Godot how to read this properly. Cool, okay, so that's our albedo done. So next we can add in the actual displacement. Like that's what we came here for, right? That's what the tutorial is about. Texture underscore displacement. And this is actually gonna affect the vertex information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just read whatever the current vertex location is, but just the Y value, just the height. And we're just gonna add to it by whatever the uh, whatever the texture displacement texture uh, says it is. We'll give it the UV and we're only gonna read the red channel. 
So this image is actually, this displacement image, you can see it's gray. It's gray because it only has information in the red channel. So instead of thinking of this as an image, you can actually think of this as just like a series of values for each pixel between zero and one. So if it's black, it's zero. If it's uh, white, it's one. And anywhere between is some number between zero and one. And so we're going through each vertex uh, on this mesh. Uh, you know, you can imagine it going left to right, top to bottom. And it's like, okay, for this vertex right here, what pixel is on this texture? And if it's black, it's going to be at zero. And if it's white, it's going to be at one or something like that. I actually don't know uh, which order it's in, but something like that. Okay. So if you go in here and we assign a texture to this uniform variable that we've just exposed in the inspector for the displacement, then we'll be able to see the displacement on our mesh. But I'm going to change the amount of subdivisions just to make it really easy to see on YouTube just what it's doing. And now you can see every individual rock is raised up a little bit. And it's actually like a little bit too much. It's actually definitely too much. But you can see that this texture is really well done because every individual rock is raised up. Anyway, let's add some more detail to our shader. Let's add uniform sampler 2D texture underscore. And I'll just copy this a few times because we're going to add the normal. We're going to have roughness. We're going to add ambient occlusion. So we'll do normal. We'll do AO and we'll do roughness. Now, ambient occlusion is probably the easiest to add. You just multiply the albedo by the AO texture underscore AO. And oh, gotta give it the UV, forgot. And we gotta give it just the R value there. And then for the normal, that's normal map, not normal, normal map equals texture of normal texture, give it UV. This one is an RGB. Uh, and then finally, the roughness is also just roughness equals texture, texture underscore, oops, or roughness, give it UV. And that one's also just black and white. Let's give it the R, R channel. Okay, and then we got to add these in. Texture normal. And you can see the normal adds these little dark outlines over every individual rock, which is just gorgeous. If I disable it, you can see the difference here. Really big difference. Ambient inclusion adds shadows wherever ambient lighting wouldn't be able to get to. And then the roughness, the complement of that would be specularity. So you can see there's a shine now on every individual rock. Like you look at this one, for example, it gets shiny from a certain angle. Now, if you want, you can add a slider to the roughness as well. That's something I want to do for my game. So that way I can add rain. So I'll do uniform float scale roughness. And I'll just multiply the roughness by whatever that is. And you can see that's going to make it look super like infinitely wet, but you can increase that to make it look rougher. So right here is the shiniest where it's slightly wet, but not fully. At a 0 0.5. And then if I just increase this to infinity, it'll be bone dry. But I like about 1.1. I think 1.1 is a pretty nice middle ground because it's supposed to be fairly rough. I like to be a little rougher looking than the, the base texture. Um, I'll also turn down the displacement a bit. I think this is ludicrous to have it this, this displaced. And there you go. So there's our final shader. Now we can save this as a material. So that way we can apply it to other meshes as well. So if you click on this drop down here, can do save as, and I'll save this as the ground 079L material. And now I can apply that to any mesh. But yeah, I hope this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to join our community, you can hop in the Discord. Thanks so much.